Luke McCormack. Good afternoon and welcome to this month's show. I'm Luke McCormack. During today's show, we will discuss best practices with IT modernization strategies in the federal government. With me on today's show are Mark Knightinger, Director of Cybersecurity and Communications Federal Network Resilience Department of Homeland Security. Guy Cavallo, Deputy Chief Information Officer, Small Business Association. Ken Rogers, Acting Deputy Chief Information Officer, Business Management and Planning Directorate, Department of State. Josh Broadman, Technical Evangelist, Beyond Trust. Adam Clater, Chief Architect, North American Public Sector for Red Hat. And Kevin Orr, Vice President, Federal BMC Software. We are talking out of IT modernization. The White House has stated numerous times recently in public that the only way that we can deliver world-class security and deliver outstanding citizen services, we have to modernize. And we have to modernize in a modern way. And we have a great group of folks here today uh, from the uh, federal sector and a great group of partners that are going to talk all about how we're doing that and what we still have to go. So, Mark, why don't you start us off on uh, where we are as far as progress in modernizing uh, the environment across the spectrum that you see. And why don't you give us 30 seconds on, you know, what part of DHS are you uh, responsible for? Okay, Luke, uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, from the element of DHS that I'm involved with, basically uh, the Federal Network Resilience uh, Division is responsible to work with all executive branch federal agencies, so basically 103 agencies uh, in total, and that ranges from the smallest agency that ha out in Nevada that has uh, more horses and cars to the VA department. So our, our purpose is to make sure that all our cybersecurity programs that DHS offers, uh, the agencies are taken advantage of, but more so listening to the agencies as to where their challenges are and where we can provide further services and support. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we work very closely with them in regards to um, leveraging the programs that we do offer to the agencies as well as be able to provide them a, uh, a clear profile from a risk perspective as to where their cyber challenges may be significant. And we take a look across the government in regards to trends. So that said, that's what our involvement has been. But in relationship to the IT modernization activity itself, uh, our division um, coord actually coordinated across all cybersecurity and communications within DHS to address the 53 actions that actually came out of the IT modernization plan itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, we've been very engaged in regards to all those activities. To your question as to where are we along that line, uh, we've made some significant progress in regards to uh, working in regards to helping agencies get a sense as to the primary focus areas that were um, stressed in the, in the plan itself, specifically in regards to cloud uh, and a lot of work that we're doing there, which we can get into a little bit later, but sure basically. Too. Very integrated into the entire uh, interagency and uh, security being one of those number one things. That's Let's right. hear from Ken at State. Uh, where, where, where's the state of the state, so to speak? With, uh, with your department in regards to your modernization journey? So um, w one of our big eff eff efforts this past year is to really um, take a complete look at where are we with IT, um, how are we delivering that, and where are our strengths and weaknesses. And, and one of the big things that we have, have done in FY 1718 is to, is to establish a cloud strategy, a, a department-wide, enterprise-wide cloud strategy. We had we'd made a lot of progress under, under the previous administration cloud first, um, and, and that has resulted in, in some level of cloud sprawl. So how do we optimize cloud computing at the Department of State and really de deliver that as a service? Um, there's some inherent challenges for Department of State being, a, being a, one of, if not the largest global organizations, um, is how do, we, how do we pair the security, our global network, um, how do we lower our costs and maintain the same kind of security, the monitoring, um, and, 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 and retain access to our data as we push that into the cloud. And of course, you know, um, to kind of dispel some of the nuance of cloud computing, 
competing. You still have data at rest, data in transit in different places. And depending on how cloud computing is, how the cloud providers are structured, we have data issues, data at rest overseas. So how do we manage that in an effective way? How do we protect that in an effective way? How do we, how do we maintain data sovereignty as we and, and performance as we manage the globe. So one of the things we put an RFI out um, a couple months ago for, for our network to look at, is there, is there a, an industry solution that could, that could lower costs and increase performance, bandwidth, latency, those issues, sure. and couple that with security mm -hmm. as, we, as we move a lot of our systems right. and data into the a cloud. A lot of things mm -hmm. to think about as you start mm -hmm. on this modernization journey. Uh, Adam, uh, you, you, you uh, have a unique perspective where you're seeing this community uh, you know, move through this, uh, again, this journey uh, to modernize. Um, why don't you maybe give us a snapshot of what it looked like a year ago and what you're seeing now as far as progress? Absolutely. So I think, uh, you know, Ken mentioned a couple of really important points, right? The first would certainly be cloud first and the efforts that came out of that. So a lot of folks made a lot of moves into cloud. There's adoption of a variety of SaaS type of solutions across the board. And so we've seen really good adoption of that. And that's that was really a lot of the low hanging fruit. Uh, what we've seen in the last year have been some efforts around lift and shift kind of strategies of I'm going to pick my data center up and put it into someone else's data center. Uh, uh, effectively entering into a managed services type of contract with a cloud provider, right? Um, what we're finding though is that all, doesn't always uh, translate into the successes and the features and functionality that people want from cloud uh, per se. So now I think agencies are taking another look at how they're beginning to move into the cloud. We're seeing a much more significant adoption of containerization mm -hmm. uh, as well as automation of existing workloads and trying to use that automate automation as part of the modernization strategy to then move those workloads into the cloud. Right, as you start to do these organic builds into the cloud, you really get to use all the features that are available in that type of technology. And you know, there's always some unintended consequences as an early adopter trying to move into this. Guy, how about at SBA? You know, you guys are on a roll over there as far as your modernization efforts. Uh, why don't you give us an update as to what's been happening over the course of the last few months? Sure, in, uh, in addition to being deputy CIO, I'm the executive sponsor of all of our cloud modernization efforts. But mm -hmm. the most important thing is, while I love modernization, if it doesn't improve the agency mission, that's not where we are. So everything that we're doing to modernize is to help SBA perform our mission better. Uh, last year, one of the uh, primary goals of the president's <laughs> management agenda, right? Absolutely. Citizen services. Uh, last year, Maria Rode, our CIO, and I decided that we would uh, not replace our aging, falling apart data center uh, and move to the cloud. But it was falling apart so fast, we could not take a long time. So mm -hmm. uh, in 82 days from start from the first meeting I held till we had an ATO, we had our cloud data center built. But that's old, so old, that's last year. Uh, this, this year we're very uh, excited that, that uh, OMB and DHS selected us to be uh, one of the TIC modernization pilots. And for the non-federal uh, listeners, the TIC is a trusted internet connection that is uh, run by DHS to look through and monitor all uh, network communications. Uh, it was built 10, plus years ago, mm -hmm. and what we were finding was tremendous latency with anything that you were doing in the cloud to bring it back through the tick. So in a 90-day pilot, uh, we were very happy to report, and the report will be coming out, that uh, we could use native cloud tools to not only match the intent but exceed uh, the intent, and this is going to have a massive impact across government mm -hmm. as far as how you do cybersecurity uh, using tools that you may already own. Which is significant, right? That, that, that whole uh, you know, backhaul, hairpin type of situation that everyone was having with the tick across the federal community was a big barrier to you know, accelerated cloud adoption. Well, we can't talk about modernization unless we start talking about identity management and everything associated to good, hardened security. Josh, what's happening at Beyond Trust and what are you seeing out there across the community as we look to modernize? 
So um, I absolutely agree with Adam as far as with data centers and, and looking at uh, cloud adoption and containerization of things. At Beyond Trust, we are looking forward into DevOps and securing the, the keys and such that are going to end up in containers uh, as, as the DevOps move forward. Um, in addition to that, we're also seeing a, a large push to make sure that two-factor authentication is enabled across the network. Um, and so we're utilizing some of our uh, session management and password vaulting technology to be able to put a front end that allows two-factor authentication and, and certificate uh, authentication against some devices that may not support it already. And we know that, you know, the majority of the uh, cyber breaches started with a hijack of credentials and then, you know, accelerated uh, privileges, et cetera. It's a, it's a playbook that's run over and over. Uh, Kevin, how about at BMC Software? I know that you guys are working with a lot of the different agencies. What are you seeing out there as far as progress across the community? So it's interesting, Luke. We're seeing an awful lot of things. The migration to cloud we've talked about, I see that every day. I also see that the fact is we're looking at multi-hybrid clouds. Asset management and discovery becomes a big piece and play into it. Uh, what do I really own? What do I own on the other side of the cloud? What's really there? Then I also start seeing how do I, how am I going to optimize my clouds? And then how's performance and analytics? What are my SLAs? How am I working through that process? Um, really, really interesting stuff that's coming through. And then compliance. Compliance is the big one here. I don't want a certain set of compliance for my internal data center and a separate set of compliance in the cloud. Right? How do I streamline and put one set of compliance across everything and know what it's working? The other big factor that we're seeing right now is we're getting to the point where we're getting a lot of people in the government are starting to retire. Right? I was at a big agency yesterday that is very, very concerned at 2023 when things spike that they may not have the right people here to go through it. So we're really focusing on the automation process in IT and people are calling us in to how do I automate processes today because I'm going to have fewer people in the future. Right. And how do I reskill my workforce and hire in uh, some new workforce and you know, maybe we can talk a little bit about the, uh, the workforce challenge as we look to modernize. Uh, let me start with you, Adam, in regards to, I always like to talk about uh, just a specific program and highlight uh, one that could be of interest to the uh, community. I know that Red Hat is, is uh, in a lot of agencies, a lot of the ones that have done the early adoption. Can you highlight a, <clears throat> a program that um, you guys are working on as far as uh, in the modernization effort? Yeah, well, you know, we are... Um we're, like you said, we're, we're basically everywhere. And so you I can think... You name an agency. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes they don't appreciate that. <laughs> so course. what I can uh -huh. say is that, um, you know, we've got a lot of extensive modernization efforts going on. And so, you know, I would say that sort of throughout <laughs> the government, we are, we are seeing modernization. I think what I find most interesting is where uh, some of the legacy activities that may have formerly been, um, you know, based on even uh, COBOL or ADA type of technologies, we're finding those are being containerized and deployed out uh, in platforms. So when we think about airframe and even radar type modernization efforts uh, throughout the Department of Defense, we're finding that containerizing those workloads and bringing, as was mentioned, some of the DevOps capabilities to those efforts uh, are moving forward quite rapidly. So right. we're really excited about it's those. It's really amazing to see how things are getting engineered through these uh, different types of technology to keep the movement going. Guy, I know there's a whole bunch of activity over at SBA. Can you give us one program that you're working on there? Would you like to highlight? <clears throat> uh, sure. The, what I mentioned a little bit earlier, our tech modernization pilot has turned our cybersecurity view of, of the SBA world on its head. Uh, we, on, we are now big brother. We can see everything. We see everything that every employee is doing around the SBA. And, and again, we do have employees internationally. Um, you know, some of the new rules from the administration about not taking government furnished equipment overseas, mm -hmm. we now are at the point where before we wouldn't know it. Now we are calling managers and finding out is this employee on official travel and if not shutting off their accounts and then uh, revamping their equipment when it comes back. So uh, what we started as a tick modernization pilot really, as I said, has really revolutionized our cybersecurity visualization of our world, um, where attacks are coming from, uh, and we're just using out-of-the-box cloud cybersecurity. And but what we're fantastic about that is, is, is you know, <laughs> what that model, that configuration that you all have put together, working very closely with DHS, is going to benefit every agency uh, once mm -hmm. they uh, sort of harden that and um, 
institutionalize it. I think it's fantastic. So I applaud SBA for that. One, one last thing on that. Sure. Look, what, what we've done a little bit different, and I, I still see it's hard for our industry to break out of, is we took the cloud tools and turned them on-premise. I still see a lot of agencies trying to go, okay, I have my on-premise environment, so I'm going to keep doing the tools and everything I've done with that for years. Mm -hmm. And then the cloud, I'll do something different. Yeah. So we turned off the on-premise tools and used yeah. the cloud tools to do everything. Yeah, That's that's why one different place. Different way of thinking uh, <laughs> when you're looking to architect. Uh, Kent, how about at stake? Can you give us one program uh, that you uh, uh, yeah. want to highlight for the community? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, one of our big initiatives, uh, taking a page out of SBA's book, you know, how do we how do we um, modernize in a way that executes the mission of the organization and one of the needs of our diplomats overseas is we frame it as the untethered diplomat. How do we how do we, we equip and enable them to have access to their data anywhere, anytime um, in a secure fashion? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing a, a massive consolidation of, of our mobile device management capability, consolidating that, optimizing that for use on BYOD as well as government furniture equipment and then expanding our Wi-Fi program and really looking at how do we leverage that that access and capability and secure way to access the data and 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 this is really bringing that customer satisfaction up sure. to a level where you really can take your iPad or phone or right. um, device and and you're in meetings and you need the data and you need to make sure it's, it's protected mm -hmm. so that's one of our uh, we're, we're moving out on that very quickly and this, this, this year so. diplomat I love yeah. it yeah. Uh, Josh how about at uh, Beyond trust. Uh, what, what are you seeing out there? You want to highlight a program that uh, may be of interest to our community. <clears throat> so, uh, a lot like Adam, a lot of our customers don't don't necessarily like their names being mentioned. Um, but uh, we we see a lot of what I alluded to earlier, where you have uh, network appliances that can't fully be secured, and we're we're worried about obviously credentials being overutilized and uh, leveraging our solution to be able to take care of that. We also are seeing our um, our solutions being used to reduce the the threat vectors that are there. So rather than having administrative credentials on um, Linux boxes or on Windows workstations, you can actually leverage our solution to make sure that those credentials aren't used and end users still have productivity that they need. Um, so we see a lot of those initiatives as we're, as we're working through the government. Fantastic. And that, you know, once again, that identity management, very key as we broaden this footprint, right, and open up the aperture, uh, a lot of uh, vectors that need to be accounted for. Um, Ken, how about at BMC? What do you, or excuse me, Kevin at BMC, what do you see in regards to... Uh, you know, specific program there that you'd like to uh, highlight. One particular customer that's interesting, they provide yeah. Medicare and Medicaid services and claim services to 100 million Americans. Okay. So think about the scope. I guess scope. we can figure out who that is. Right? You think yeah. about the uh, yeah. the yeah. scope of what it takes, right? Uh, you got a people problem and you got a cybersecurity problem. Um, and one of your big pieces is you got an automation problem. How do I patch, right? So what we see out there, our average clients today still are taking 183 days after a known vulnerability to patch. Right? Um, that's on average across the globe for our customers. So we've got to shrink that vector. And they've done a really good job of taking a look at this and automating the process from putting the STIG in place, going through the compliance just like you would do manually, and do full closed loop compliance. Now that is a game changer for them. Right, from processing things that are repetitive over and over again, making sure my infrastructure, I open a trouble ticket, I basically run through my organization, I patch it, I get 92% the first run, I come back, I get the other 8%, and now I'm doing it in 15 minutes versus weeks, hours, and months. Really important uh, to be able to automate this capability, big uh, area uh, that has exposed us over the years. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, you've been listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. With me on today's show are Mark Neitinger, Department of Homeland Security, Guy Cavello, Small Business Association, Ken Reynolds, Acting Chief Information Officer, Department of State, Josh Broadbent, Beyond Trust, Adam Clater with Red Hat, and Kevin Orr, 
BMC Software. We were talking about specific programs. We want to go to you, Mark, and talk about a specific program that you're working on in regards to the auto IT modernization. Yeah, Luke, you know, we've been talking uh, about cloud and how that was a key element in the IT modernization activity. Uh, specifically, uh, the federal CIO has put out a program called Cloud Secure. Now that sort of ties a lot of things into that in regards to the initiatives under the IT modernization efforts. From a DHS perspective, uh, we've been working with OMB in regards to a uh, number, basically five pilots to identify how we can better be able to address uh, both migration to the cloud but also utilization of the cloud to address a lot of the latency issues associated with our current TIC structure. A lot has been learned from there uh, and also we'll be coming up with a report that's going to identify, I think, means by which to do that. But that's only part of it because another key part of that is how do you also address the secure part of cloud secure. And a key element with uh, DHS that also came out of the IT modernization plan is taking a look at our major programs like Einstein and CDM and how they need to morph in regards to addressing the cloud and the mobility issues um, in regards to providing not only the security needed for the cloud, but also uh, how we can be able to leverage the um, uh, transparency of where the risk factors are, where some of the uh, threat issues may be. So a key element with DHS right now is taking a look at our major programs working towards the concept of cloud secure so that we can better enable the agencies through those programs to address that security, that cybersecurity element associated with the cloud migration. Right, I mean that architecture was built uh, quite some time ago right. with not really so much with cloud in mind. That's right. And so the adoption of uh, this technology that Guy's talking about in regards to, you know, sort of a modernized tech, uh, you know, uh, we need to think about that in the rest of the ecosystem so that we have good flow, but it's nice and secure. Uh, Ken, let's talk about funding. How do we fund the modernization effort, right? We've got the working capital fund that's available to us. We have the uh, funding that's available out of the NGT. How is State Department getting their head around, uh, you know, how to, how to, you know, how to incubate this capability from a funding perspective? Right. So we were, we, uh, uh, launched our initial program with the MGT Act to, to put uh, one, uh, one of the cloud solutions in there. We look forward to looking at the results of the ones that were funded through that. Um, but at State Department, we have we have two two funding vehicles. We have, have one of the board members right here. Yeah. yeah. Um, why did you pick us? No. <laughs> we're we're trying to do the global tick. You know, something overseas that facilitates yeah, that. This. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> but um, we have, at State Department, we have the IT Central Fund, which is, which is um, our IT modernization mm -hmm. fund. And that's somewhat fee-driven and then budget-driven. And, and so we really set the, that aside. It, it fluctuates based on our expedited passport fees. Um, but it sets a, a, a baseline of resources that we can set aside for development and modernization. So it's very similar to the fund that was devel developed through the, right. through the MGTX. Mm -hmm. Second, we, have, we, have, we already have working capital fund authority. So one of the key tenants in our modernization strategy is as we mature these programs, these services, these shared services, how do we cost those out, model those, unitize the costs, and push them into a working capital fund that allows us to, to really you know, pay by the drink the, yeah. uh, and, and, and leverage it that way. So our, our first tier is to really prioritize how do we use that IT central fund. Second is moving stuff into the working capital fund that is at the right maturity level, which is what we're doing with our mobile program. And then, and then as we, as current year initiatives start to queue up, you know, are there opportunities to further leverage the MGT Act? Sure. And Guy, how about over at the small business administration, I think I said association, sorry about that. Uh, what are you guys doing? Do you have a working capital fund? How, how are you generating the revenue or the, the funds to do all these modernization activities you guys are up to? Sure. Unfortunately, by our legislation, we do not have a working capital fund. Okay. We're going to need we're going to need the legislation change to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so Marie and I were faced, we both came in in FY17 and inherited the FY17 
budget that had zero dollars for cloud. Um, and so without a working capital fund, what we decided to do is let's build a partnership with the CFO and basically make a deal. And so we went to the CFO and said, if we can find the money in our own budget by downsizing, right-sizing contracts, since we're going to move to the cloud, we don't need as many uh, you know, servers. We don't need as much server maintenance. We don't need as much ups. Will you let us reinvest that money? And they said, yeah, if you can do it and stay within your budget, you can do that. So we recovered millions of dollars and were able to pay for our cloud modernization out of our own pocket, and we're continuing to do that today. Uh, I just signed off on, on uh, a procurement document that cut one of the major vendors' uh, license fees by 75% because the question I ask my team is if we're going to buy a thousand licenses or something, bring to me who, how many people used it last year. Sure. And when only 30 people used it last year, I cut it to 50 instead right. of buying another thousand. So that's how we've been able to self-fund it. And I recommend, it's hard work, but I recommend all agencies do that. Yeah, good uh, license make metering is yeah, uh, Make sure that you're properly licensed. Right. You need to be properly licensed. Mm -hmm. But also that means you don't want to be paying excessive amounts for licenses you're not even using. Right. Of course, that can flip the other way on a true up and you yes. end up owing some because you're not in compliance. But mm -hmm. it's great to see you guys are you know, basically cut, keep, and reinvest. Kevin, what do you see out there as far as, you know, how the uh, agencies are trying to fund this capability? Anything you want to sort of uh, you know, share with us? It's interesting. Your, yeah, it varies by agency. Partner it, perspective. Yeah. yeah, it varies by agency and also by Department of Defense or civilian and right. how they're funded across the board. Uh, stark differences. What I do see in common, though, is everybody has a cloud vision. I know I've got to get there. Uh, depending on the level of funding, I see some people starting to walk, you know, some of them are crawling to get there, but ultimately I see everybody moving to a cloud type of strategy. Right. Um, they're still keeping one foot in the existing camp mm -hmm. and figuring out what I want to do. And what I really see people doing is rationalizing what applications should I be taking where, when, and how. Yeah. Uh, we started helping people with the modeling of that piece. Um, we took a look at cloud cost control and we said, you know, you really want to look at a multi-year strategy. What's your life cycle to take it to the cloud? It's a lot like outsourcing. Once you give it away, it's really hard to get it back, mm -hmm. right? So we do an awful lot of modeling with people and we, we're really seeing that piece start to take off right now just to kind of, you know, what should I take? How should I take it? Um, and there's a lot of choices, right? There's multiple cloud services out there. We're going to be in a world that you're not going to choose one cloud, but you're going to choose multiple clouds over your life cycle. So really, how do you manage that aspect of your business across the world? And that's what we're getting called into an awful lot. Sure. Uh, Adam, how about at Red Hat? Yeah, I'm sure you're, you're seeing a lot of different sort of techniques being used, so to speak, as far as how people are approaching this from a funding perspective. Perhaps you're working with some of the agencies that are using some of the MGT funds to, uh, to modernize. Nice. You want to uh, absolutely give us uh, some insight there from wh where where you sit as far as Red Hat's concerned. Absolutely. So I think it's very much crawl, walk, run. Right. It depends on the individual agency. I think that um, as I mentioned earlier, containerization is beginning to play a lot of a role in that. Automation is really key, as has been mentioned. You know, I like to say that when we've automated our way into a cloud, we've begun to automate our way out of a cloud as well. And so having that strategy and thinking about how am I going to move this workload to its first cloud, but then to its second or third cloud as right. well. Mm -hmm. uh, this entire cloud industry is, is very nascent. And so the, the focus today is very much on how do I get to a cloud. Uh, but it's really, I think, success will be defined by our ability to adapt to the change it's really inevitable in cloud. Uh, so the ability to move workloads uh, quickly or efficiently uh, to maximize the value, which is being able to move any workload to any cloud based on mission or cost requirements. You certainly don't want to get stuck into a single cloud and then never be able to exit out of that. Um, and so I think that uh, agencies are beginning to think really diligently about that and approaches uh, that maybe last year uh, were a little closer to lift and shift. Now we're seeing this multi-cloud strategy. Right. I think we're all on this journey of learning how to uh, fund it, learning how to procure it, 
and then learning how to consume it, right? right. And then, of course, manage it. Uh, Mark, how about at DHS in regards? So you guys have a sort of a, 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 a dual sort of role there. And um, uh, from a per funding perspective, you know, in some cases it's CDM phase one, phase two, you were sort of dishing out mm -hmm. some funding. Uh, now it's a little bit different model. How are you guys doing in regards to modernization and, and being able to fund that? Yeah, you know, within uh, uh, DHS as a department itself, uh, we do have a working capital fund. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of activity uh, uh, occurring currently at the um, at the OCIO's office in regards to taking a look at SOC as a service consolidation of SOCs. But from a perspective that we do have two faces. As a department, we're looking at uh, consolidation of stocks. Uh, we're also applying those same requirements in working with OMB and also as part of the IT modernization activity in taking a look at SOC as a service that can be provided as a service to agencies. Mm, so we're actually working with GSA at this point, right. leveraging and providing the requirements associated with that so that um, a forthcoming contract can be provided so that agencies can purchase SOC as a service. Small agencies express an interest in that, uh, I guess. That's the primary focus right. areas. Mm -hmm. And to your point in regards to CDM, you know, a key element in regards to the non-CFO Act agencies was actually to provide CDM as a shared service, which has been very successful. So now looking at SOC as a service, be able to provide that same type of capacity to that, uh, you know, to that constituent mm -hmm. uh, group. So just uh, consume that service as sort of a, 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 a full yeah. subscription offering, so yeah. to speak. And we're seeing that plus agencies as DHS looking at consolidation of SOCs, but in general, uh, really moving towards more of the concept of SOC as a service. Interesting. Josh, we always like to talk about lessons learned, and, and I always like to hear from the partners, because again, you guys have the advantage of, of looking across multiple agencies and sort of, and you know, a lot of times in the private sector as well. Uh, can you tell us maybe some lessons learned that you're seeing out there as everyone embarks on this movement? Yeah, so there's a couple of them. Um, first and foremost, uh, a lot of times as people are, are looking for sources of funding and they're doing this, this particular movement, um, Choosing the vendors on CDM became more about who the integrators wanted on CDM rather than the, the full breadth of, of products that were on the CDM list. So that became a challenge for some agencies because they weren't uh, fully prepared for what they were going to get with those integrators when CDM funded that. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, as they move to the cloud, the transition of making sure that their credentials are still secured and that there's a, a good path to access these cloud servers that they have um, is also a challenge that a lot of them didn't think about beforehand. Um, also, handling vulnerability management in those cloud services and ways to scan that are things that they didn't think about beforehand that they had to take care of uh, after the fact. Um, a lot of times with these cloud migrations, uh, I, I liken it to, to painting a house. Um, years ago, I, I dated a girl whose dad was a painter, and he always said the, the key to painting a house quickly was making sure you taped it all off, making right. sure you prepared, making sure that you planned. So a lot of the cloud transition stuff is about, is about planning before you execute. It's about making sure that you're prepared to go there so that once you actually execute that move, it happens quickly, it happens effectively. Um, the same thing occurs when we're talking about these cloud transitions. It's making sure that we've prepared to secure the cloud that we're going to. We're prepared to handle the influx of credentials. We're prepared to handle the transition in keys and containers as we as we start to, to look at containerization of these services. Um, all of these things are, are things that we have to prepare for and plan for before we get there. The mistake that happens is, <clears throat> and 82 days is a fantastic, fantastic amount of time to be able to transition completely to the cloud, but there's a lot of agencies who set themselves up for failure in expecting that they can do it and they can mimic that. Sure. Um, and, and they're just not ready for it. Right, or, or end up in uh, things like cloud sprawl that uh, Ken was talking about. You hear that a lot. Ken, how about a lessons learned there for the, uh, from the State Department in regards as you're moving on this journey that uh, you'd like to highlight? So one of the lessons learned in terms of getting ready is people in the organization, and it's a huge challenge. Um, in your opening remarks, you, you mentioned modernizing in a modernized way. Right. There's still that cadre when they hear IT modernization, mm -hmm. they want to build in parallel, buy, they build, maintain, lift and, yeah. lift and shift, and bring in army of contractors and let's rethink this. They may or may not do business process reengineering to, to really 
um, create those efficiencies for the business. And then there's those that really get cloud and understand this is a very different value proposition. It's a paradigm shift. So how do we identify those individuals? How do we develop um, and, and start moving parts of the organization around so we can get the momentum to do what we need to do as we mature and optimize the environment. Right, reskill <clears throat> and uh, you know find those early adopters and go go. Guy, I'm sure you have some lessons learned you'd like to share with the community. Uh, sure, on the technology side, the hardest part, and uh, I've talked to multiple agencies about this to make sure it wasn't just us, uh, <laughs> is connecting the cloud to a high speed pipe. Right. Uh, it took longer. It took us longer to do that than it took to build the SBA cloud and get an ATO. Uh, and what we're finding is it's taking most agencies three to six months to do it. So part of your strategy is if you think we're going to build a cloud and like us do it in 82 days, but then you're going to start migrating things, if you only have a small VPN connection, it's going to be a very tough migration yeah. for you. So that's something I think uh, we need to do better on. And I, I know I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the CIO Council's uh, committee on, on cloud and modernization, and it's one that we're going to spin up a subcommittee to look into and see, has anybody found a way to solve that problem and get it down to 30 days or sure. 45 it seems, days? It seems so obvious, right, but uh, yeah. very important. Adam, how about at Red Hot? Give us sort of the number one lesson learned that you're seeing out there across the community that, that people are just sort of stumbling into and seem to have to resolve over and over. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's a huge cultural change. Right? And so we're talking about not just how do I manage cloud, but how do I write new applications? How do I implement agile development practices? How do I how do, I do all of this? And so at Red Hat, uh, we're taking uh, just tons of our government customers through our Red Hat Innovation Labs, which, uh, you know, it, we take uh, the de application developers out of their home environment, work them through uh, a paired programming situation with some of our developers where they learn how to write modern applications uh, and then send them back at, to build a center of excellence within their agencies. And so getting out of your element, uh, learning these new skills and being able to deploy them alongside your teams uh, and bringing back even a minimally viable product as you do that based on business requirements, I think is beginning that cultural transformation uh, it's, it's one to two teams at a time, though, really, throughout the organization of how do we modernize in a, modernized, uh, in a modern way, sure. as you mentioned. So we're just finding ourselves uh, spending a lot of time teaching folks how to do that. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a journey, right? Kevin, how about at BMC? What are you seeing out there? You know, number one lesson learned. Number one, I would say a couple different things that are coming through. One that I've seen that has worked really well, kind of playing off of what Adam just said here. A lot of people focus on technology for technology. Right. How do we change that process? I've got uh, one example where an army leader joined another command, came in and looked at it and said, let's not focus on the technology. Let's focus on what is the mission? What is IT going to enable? Right? Let's change our strategy going forward. Because we're sending things, we're off rushing to the cloud, but what are we really changing? Are we doing the same thing and just shifting our costs? Or are we really taking a look at it? I'd say the one thing that I'm seeing in, in uh, organizations that are coming up with fabulous automation projects are people coming out of the blue, meeting with the top of the organization and going, what three or four or five initiatives can I map my technology back to? And that's where I see the successful moves going. And then cloud or where you're going to go is just a byproduct of getting there. But that's where I see the automation. That's how I see things being funded. Um, and they're being successful in that direction. That's the, you know, the beauty of enabling the, uh, the, the citizen and delivering that service to the citizen, right? Well, we're going to um, uh, uh, start back with uh, DHS on Lessons Learned, but we're going to take a short break. You're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. With me on today's show are Mark Knightinger, Department of Homeland Security, Guy Cavallo, Small Business Administration, Ken Rogers, Department of State, Josh Broadbent, Beyond Trust, Adam Clater, Red Hat, and Ken Orr, BMC Software. We were talking about lessons learned and I uh, wanted to finish out with you, Mark, over at DHS. Give us your number one lesson learned. You've got a broad perspective across the agencies. What are you seeing out there? 
Yeah, I, as we took a look at the IT modernization activities and their primary initiatives, dealing with moving forward with cloud, dealing with trying to push forward a SOC as a service capacity, focusing on high value assets and really uh, paying attention as to how we're securing those, taking a look at optimizing networks. Uh, all critical elements that came out of the report itself. So lesson learned is basically you can be successful if you're prepared for that. In other words, uh, agencies are fully taxed in many instances in regards to workforce, budget, uh, and a lot of new initiatives that they're trying to manage anyway. This on top of it, it's a balancing act. How do they set their priorities? So a lesson learned is ensuring that as we're moving these new initiatives forward that we're considering uh, the ability of the agency to effectively be able to embrace them and also to work very closely in regards to the budget cycles and with OMB and things of that nature. So a lot of activities occurring. Uh, it's going to have some significant changes with the agencies. I think the lesson learned is that uh, f future planning for these major changes is necessary within the agencies so that we do have the right workforce and the right budgets in place to be successful. Hearing this over and over about, you know, you know, good planning, thinking this through, right, trying to get all the different pieces and parts together before you launch in, on this journey is really uh, key. Um, but let's talk about major challenges. You know, there's all kinds of different things that block these activities from happening. I'll start with you, Guy, in regards to what are you seeing as sort of your top challenge as you, you, you modernize the uh, Small Business Administration? Uh, sure, I'd say one of the, uh, there's two top challenges we're facing. One is in the HR area and the other one's in the acquisitions area. Uh, while we're moving at cloud speed, uh, our support organizations are still back in the 90s speed. Mm -hmm. And so okay. hiring uh, a cloud expert to join our team as an employee versus having to pay for it as a contractor okay, so is something that we yeah. can't mm -hmm. move fast enough because as soon as somebody decides to join the, the public <laughs> sector, um, my friends here from the other agencies, if they can hire them faster than me, and we know it's the same salary, uh, I'll, hey, I'll always lose. we said no poaching on the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> we said that last time. We yeah. actually have a good incentive pay program. <laughs> yes. right. so, so, that, so that's, that's, that's difficult. <laughs> sure. I would love to see more federal employees uh, engaged and bought into this and, and getting the, the, uh, the training and the certifications uh, to do it, not rely as heavily on contractors. And on the acquisition side, uh, same thing, uh, getting people to change the model of I'm going to buy X widgets versus I'm going to pay for a cloud where my bill this week could be higher than next week and how do you get them to adjust to that sure. has been a bigger challenge right. than I would have expected. Ken, how about at state? Uh, what, what do you see as your, your well, major I could double uh, down. I could absolutely double there. down on, yeah, on sure. those issues. Uh -huh. uh, I'll, I'll um, also kind of reiterate what, what Adam mentioned about the culture of the organization. When it comes to people and the culture, it's not just the Fed workforce, it's the contractor workforce. And the, and, the, and the hard reality is how we do contract services going forward is going to change fundamentally. As we, as we do shared services and move a lot of those capabilities as a service with a cloud provider, I need fewer contractors on <coughs> ground. And the type of contractors that I need on ground supporting what we do are shifting as well. And so part of that our, our institutional strategic partners in the private sector are, are part of either that, that, um, that modernizing in a modern way or modernizing in a legacy way. And we, so we need to get the right people in place. Uh, the second major challenge that we have is this is really one of those, those moments in time where there's a great opportunity to uh, get your data right. As we're re-engineering systems and thinking about m moving them, not the lift and shift, but really moving them into a native cloud set of capabilities, we're moving away from that concept of, of applications to capabilities. How do we get our data right so that, so that we can mine it in an effective way going forward? Mm -hmm. and, and that is just mm -hmm. a massive challenge as, and, and something that's going to you know, hit the ground on every single system sure. that we re-engineer and move 
move into a native cloud environment. Especially as you're yeah, uh, opening up that aperture. Yeah. Well, we always like to wrap up with sort of painting a picture of the future, if you will. And we're going to start down there at the end of the table with uh, Kevin. And what, what, what do you see sort of as we're looking at this journey over the horizon over the next couple of years? Yeah, a couple of technologies I think are going to come out. Artificial intelligence, Cognizant. It's Siri today, but I right. think you're going to see enterprise-grade Siri coming, mm -hmm. right? That's coming our direction. I think another trend is work will follow you in the future. Um, you know, the, I think the day of the gone that we're all going to show up in an office and work in that office is going to change. Uh, I was with a client yesterday, and they're in the mainframe business, right? Mainframe, there's 13 uh, different customers in the federal government with mainframe still. They're not going anywhere. But where's the talent going? Right? That's a key piece of it is. So work's going to follow you, and work's going to find you in the future with your skill set. And I think the one thing, the one takeaway was we asked that discussion, we, it's culture. And organizations can change so much in culture. But the one thing that they can do is innovate. Right? The younger generations want to come in and be part of a challenging program. They want to see, are you innovating or not? Are you doing things, and are you moving fast? You know, it's okay to fail. Fail fast and move forward. If you're, and uh, the real uh, issue that I, that I see come through is people not trying fast enough. I was told early on, you know, if you're not uh, making mistakes, you're not moving fast enough. Absolutely. Just don't make the same one twice. So yeah. I think, you know, that's one thing yeah. we can do is innovate. Yeah. Josh, uh, well, what do you see as far as uh, sort of looking out in the future there? <clears throat> as we look out in the future, one of the big things that we see is, uh, as Adam referred to earlier, the containerization and microservices that are going to be launched as you, as you get into the cloud. Um, we're going to go away from these monolithic applications that uh, require multiple servers or, or huge cores to run. And what we're going to have is a, a series of microservices that can be switched out and, and changed. Um, so as we look to the future, we look to securing those containers and making sure that uh, credential management in those containers happen correctly. Guy, how about you at SBA? What do you think the future looks like in regards to the small business owner yeah, so over the next couple of years? So far, everything I've talked about today has been about increasing our cybersecurity awareness and making our systems more resilient, uh, which those things needed to happen. Where we're headed is our vision is SBA is a very traditional brick and mortar agency. If you are a small business person in Montana and you live in a rural farm and you want to start your own business, you have to get in your car or truck and drive four hours to go visit an SBA office to meet with a counselor for maybe 30 minutes and then you have that four hour drive. We want to move to where that becomes an interactive. We do away with the brick and mortar need, it's still there. But if you want to do a video conference, and maybe you want to start a stamp collecting business, but the Montana office doesn't have any experts in stamp collecting, but in SBA in Florida, there's a, a, a employee who ran a stamp business for 20 years. I'd rather talk to the person in Florida than my local one. So we want mm -hmm. to change the way we work. Use the technology uh, to transform us from brick and mortar to anywhere. And then, as, as Kevin mentioned, the artificial intelligence, we get, SBA has been around 65 years. We've probably been asked every question that you could possibly ask about what does it take to start a small business? How do I, how, you know, what type of reports that? We have all of that information documented. We already are right now are working on AI agents to read those databases to automate that process so that, so that someone at 2 a.m. if they want to can log in and get that question answered. I mean, it so seems like it's ripe for a full knowledge management type of capability, yeah. right? So that uh, every, any question that's been asked of the SBA uh, already has a, a, a solid answer, right? And it always amazes me how many agencies and how many citizens have to go uh, such distance to yeah. get to a citizen ser uh, service. So uh, this is all about enabling uh, in a digitized way. Yeah. Uh, Adam, how about at Red Hat? What do you guys see as far as the uh, future in regards to the federal service? You guys have a strong private practice as well. Paint a picture for us. Yeah. So I think in addition to kind of the undertones of automation and containerization that we've been speaking about today, I think there's just a drive to be much more responsive to the line of business uh, within the government agency. Uh, and so what we're finding is that, you know, this mantra of fail fast, try often, uh, the ability for agencies and especially the CIO organization to respond to the demand of their line of business faster uh, is only going to grow. And so what I'm seeing is 
a movement towards platforms for application development where applications can be written quickly, deployed, and abstracted away from whatever cloud implementation they're using, whether that be their internal cloud uh, or an external cloud. So I think that's going to continue to accelerate and just the consumption of those platforms for application deployment, development. Uh, and then I think we're also going to see a, a large uh, especially in the next year or two, uh, growth of the concept of service mesh. Uh, so how do I manage all of these microservices in such a way that I have the availability uh, and the capability to provide those application needs to those lines of business? And just be able to sort of stitch that together, right? And sort of, sort of fuse it together very quickly and build a microservice uh, without having to reinvent that kind of capability is going to be significant, right? Absolutely, it yeah. is. We're seeing major, major refactoring, uh, as well as even just wrappers around existing legacy applications being done with microservices. As that microservice footprint grows through an agency, how they manage and, and uh, control those is going to be critical. Right, and you know, a, a, uh, it's almost like a code library for microservices, right, where you can just pull this stuff off the shelf and sort of you know, stitch it together very quickly and uh, deliver on the good. And also being able to do a micro dose, right? In other words, you know, that fail fast, you know, mm -hmm. do it in a small, tiny little uh, blossom, so to speak. I think so that's an experiment, the, right? That is the most important thing yeah. to understand in the fail fast mantra is that our unit of work is much smaller so if we fail our impact is much smaller right Absolutely. we're not talking about entire systems failing when we say fail much faster smaller, much quicker uh, much less expensive of a uh, of, a, of an issue there can uh, paint a picture what, what does it look like in the state department as the traveling public the diplomat etc i see we have e-passports what's next so uh, uh, the two bookmarks in our IT strategic plan are data and IT workforce of the future. And, and so we've talked a lot about modernizing the technology and getting that right. But one of the big push is that we have over the next five years, um, data is our sustained asset. It is a strategic asset. And how do we make better use of that asset in, in dealing with the tough um, political issues around the globe? How do we get that to the diplomats so they have it available when they need it? They can layer it, they can structure it, they can visualize it, visualize it in order to facilitate their mission. And, and so how do we bring this together in a way? Um, and, and a big piece of that um, is having the right people, uh, both on the, on the contract side, we have the civil service and foreign service um, that provide that, the IT capability. As we move a lot of our stuff to the cloud, I have a workforce overseas in every one of my embassies what is the IT, the foreign service IT job of the future as we move to the cloud? It's moving to those consulting services, a whole new cadre of, of IT expertise needed in the federal government that we have to get to if we're gonna deliver IT well for the mission. And then the final big piece, exactly the same issue that SBA has. We're, we're doing a hardcore uh, reformation program for our IT acquisitions. IT in the federal space cannot be done without IT acquisitions being done well. Bingo, so bingo, we've got to right? get that in place. Mm -hmm. You really need to modernize uh, the hiring, modernize the acquiring, uh, so that you can modernize the, uh, the environment, right? That's really what we're talking about here. Uh, Mark, well, we didn't get to you on lessons learned, so maybe you can give us uh, one lessons learned and then you can jump into painting the picture. Sure. Uh, in regards to the moving forward with the IT modernization activity, you need strong leadership, consistent leadership, um, because we have to take a look at the long run in regards to be a cloud and the planning forward. And with revolving door occurring with the CIOs and CISOs, um, uh, leaving and the number of acting in place that has that has caused a, a situation where the long-term planning and sustainment because of the leadership change is is a challenge so that's a lesson learned in regards to looking at the future increased sophistication in regards to the type of technologies government's going to be using in regards to mobility the cloud AI zero, zero trust networks and things of that nature that in parallel to sophistication increases in regards to cybersecurity threats. So we have to be smart in regards to the way that we're addressing cybersecurity in regards to 
not only looking within the government sector as to solutions, but we have to take a broader look, bringing in the private sector, industry, and such. You know, the vice president a couple of weeks ago announced uh, uh, the DHS uh, National Risk Management Center. Mm -hmm. It's that type of strategy that we look to the future on in regards to taking a look at the broad uh, set of uh, challenges that are being faced nationally and apply that both in the industry as well as in government. Um, the sophistication is going to increase. We need to be in front of that. And that uh, tight private and public sector partnership is really cool yeah. and really important as well. I, 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 fantastic. Uh, Guy, give us your number one priority. And I'm going to ask Ken and Mark as well. we got about one minute left. Uh, number one priority for SBA. I said just continuing to modernize and, and reinvent ourselves and better delivering the mission so that when the next series of hurricanes hit or disasters hit, we can get loans out to people and businesses faster and we can help small businesses uh, get restarted faster than we're able to do today. Which is a big part of our economy. Ken, how about at state? Number one priority. Modernize, modernizing our IT environment in a secure way. Mark? I'd say modernizing the way that we're approaching cybersecurity to ensure that all the sophisticated changes that are occurring are secure. All right. Well, this has been a fantastic subject and a fantastic discussion. And I really do appreciate it and thank the guests for taking the time from their busy schedules to join us for this program. I'd like to thank the sponsors for Without We Do Not Have a Show. I'd like to thank the good people here at Federal News Radio who make this program so successful and enjoyable. And most of all, I'd like to thank you, the listening audience out there that tune in every month. You're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.